Hello again everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most important topics in your computer architecture course. So this is going to be an introduction to the MIPS processor architecture. So the MIPS processor architecture is basically one of the most popular processor architectures that are still in use today. It involves mainly three things, a MIPS register file, um, memory, and MIPS instructions. So we're going to go through all of that in detail, but since this is just an introduction, there are a few things you should know. It's one of the most popular architectures, process, most popular processor architectures. And another thing you should know about the MIPS processor architecture is that it's a load store architecture. Right, I know that you don't know the meaning of this term yet, like load store architecture, what is that? So I'm going to mark that in blue and we're going to get back to it in just a few minutes. Right, so as I said before, MIPS processor architecture basically involves three things. Firstly, it's going to have um, the register file, the MIPS register file. Then we're going to have memory. And finally, we're going to have MIPS instructions. So let's start off with the register file. The MIPS register file is basically a 32 into 32 unit. So 32, the first 32 here, it means there are 32 bits in every unit of the file. And this one, this 32, means there are a total of 32 units. So I'm going to show you the diagram of the register file in a few minutes, but stick with me here. These are just the basics. So the register file has 32 bits and 32 units, which means 32 registers, and each, res each register is 32 bits. So a few things you should know about the register file is that it's inside the CPU. So accessing the registers in a register file is done quite quickly. Accessing is fast, which means there are fewer clock cycles. Um, in computer architecture, in computer system, time is measured in the number of clock cycles. So the fewer the number of clock cycles you need, which means the faster the process is. So accessing a register file, accessing any data in a register file is quite fast. Right, so a register, each register stores a variable, stores the value of a variable. All right, and registers are represented with a dollar sign. Say, for example, dollar $t0. This is a register, a temporary register. So all you need to know here is a register file. We can access it quickly. It's inside the CPU. There are a total of 32 registers in the MIPS architecture register file. Each register has a size of 32 bits. That's all you need to know for now. Next, let's go to, all right, oh wait, one more thing, 32 bits, you should know that that means one word, hopefully you guys know this, so, 32 bits means one word. Next, let's go to the memory. So, the memory uh, associated with the MIPS architecture is 4 GB, which means 4 gigabytes. Each memory location is 8 bits. So in the register file we saw that each memory location is 32 bits which means it's word addressable. In 
memory, you'll see that each location is 8 bits, which means it's basically byte addressable. So you're going to need to know these terms just for your understanding. Byte addressable and this one is word addressable. Okay, right. To access memory, um, you're going to need a greater number of clock cycles, which means you're going to need more time to access memory because memory is external. For example, RAM, random access memory is external. It's not inside the CPU. So we're going to need a greater number of clock cycles, which means a greater access time. Computer systems always try to use the memory as less as possible because you know we want efficiency in computer systems. So if you act, if you keep accessing the memory for you know every operation, it means that you're going to take a very long time to get even the simplest of things done. So the technique is use the register file as much as possible and use the memory only when only when you want to load things from the memory or store things into the memory so here was our term the load store architecture characteristic of the mips processor architecture it basically means this load store architecture that we are going to be accessing the memory only when we want to load data from the memory or store data to the memory so this is really important to only access memory when we want to load data into memory or uh, no sorry load data from the memory into registers or store data into memory from registers all right so that was what we basically needed to know for the memory part okay so what we basically learned is that there's register file there's a memory register file takes you know short access time memory takes long access time Always try to use register file except for load and store instructions. Then you're going to have to access the memory. So you can basically guess that the load and store MIPS instructions take the longest amount of time to execute. Right. So what are MIPS instructions? MIPS instructions, um, they help the transfer of data between the register file and the memory. There are three types of MIPS instructions. So three instructions, instruction formats. So you have your R type, R type, your I type, and your J type. Alright, so there are three types of MIPS, instruc MIPS instructions, R type, I type and J type. We're going to look at each format in detail in the next tutorial. But for now, all you need to know about the MIPS instructions is that it helps to move data from inside registers. You can carry out arithmetic operations, for example, add, sub, then there is load, which means load data from memory, store, which means store data into memory. These are a few examples of instructions. And uh, all right, so instructions basically help move data from memory inside registers files. You get the point. So this is basically the three terms which you need to know when talking about MIPS processor architecture. Now we're going to take a look at each of them in a bit more detail. Yeah. All right, so these three diagrams are the things that we have just discussed. This is your MIPS register file. This is 
an example of memory and this is an example of a sequence of MIPS instructions. So I'm just going to go over the things again. In the register file you can see that there are 32 bits which means each register has a size of 32 bits and there are 32 locations all right each location has a specific purpose which we're not going to go into now but just remember that 32 bits 32 locations then we have memory all right so as i discussed before each uh, you know each space in memory is equal to eight eight bits so I'm just going to color that in blue because it's not written. Every single space you see here is equal to 8 bits. But now the problem is here. See that in each register, in each register, in the register file, the size is 32 bits. But in the memory for each space here the size is 8 bits so how are you going to bring you know data from the memory into the registers and then from the registers into the memory so the solution here is that memory is accessed in groups of four which means that you know this one two three four four of these locations will store a single data from a register all right so this can seem a little confusing but trust me you're gonna get it eventually so memory has eight bits in each location and registers register file has 32 bit registers so, four memory locations store a single data from a register, all right? You really, really need to know this because it's important stuff. It's basically the basics. Okay, then. Now look at the addresses here beside the memory. You'll see that it's these are word addresses, which means hex. So inside the data, the data sizes are 8 bits, but the address of each data is in hex. All right, just take a second to process this. The data size is 8 bits and the address of each piece of data of each location in memory is 32 bits, which means, you know, hex, word addressing. All right. So the first one they've written here is, you know, all of the bits are zero. And then the next location they've written here, all of the bits are zero except for the last one, which is four. Right. So. Since four memory locations store a single data from a register, the memory is basically incremented in terms of four. So this is going to be zero, this is going to be four, eight, and then we're going to have 12, then 16, on and on and on, until we've reached our maximum location, which is um, 4 GB. All right, so that's basically what your memory is. The inside data is 8 bits, the addresses are in hex, which means 32 bits. Memory is incremented in multiples of 4 because, you know, 4 memory locations make up 1 register location. These were your basics. Alright, now we have, you know, instructions on this side. So I'm not going to go deeply into this because we have a separate tutorial for just to understand, you know, MIPS instructions. So this one is going to end here. All right, thank you. Move on to the next tutorial, guys. You're going to get to see MIPS instructions.